I have gone over a lot of AI tools on this channel. I've made probably 30 plus videos at this point covering those various tools. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about which ones I actually use. On a day-by-day -day basis, as a developer, what tools are open on my computer and are getting the most use? Stick around, I'm gonna go through a bunch of them and you're probably gonna learn about some new ones that you've never seen before. So let's start with some of the obvious ones. I have Cursor and Windsurf. Now Cursor is typically my go-to IDE, especially if I'm working on something that is a hybrid project, so it has a backend, a front-end, and a lot of different components. Then I have uh, Windsurf, which is another editor that I use. I was using Windsurf a lot when it first came out because I found that it did actually perform better than Cursor, but now Cursor has just accelerated extremely fast. And to be honest, I mostly use Cursor on a day-by-day -day basis because I find that now it is better than Windsurf. Again, these things change. Maybe Windsurf will come out with an update and then I'll start using it again. At the beginning, it had a bunch of features that Cursor didn't have, and then Cursor pretty much copied all of them and added them to the IDE, and that's how it is. Now, if you want tutorials on these tools and you're not sure what they are, essentially they are AI IDEs, which means you can go in this window and do something like, hey, you know, change the title of my website you can pick your model in this case i'm using gpt5 and then it's just going to go ahead and start actually writing code for you making changes and then allowing you to view those changes inside of the editor now because i am a real developer i still like to have control of the code i like to modify things myself move around the files and i'm very comfortable in these type of editors so that's why i prefer to use this most of the time when i'm developing However, there are a lot of other AI tools that aren't full IDEs that I'm going to talk about later in this video. Now, the next tool on my list is by far the one that I use the most, and that is ChatGPT. Pretty straightforward. I'm sure all of you use this, but I want to explain to you what I use it for and why it gets the most amount of use. Now, I use ChatGPT for pretty much everything, whether it's writing emails, responding to queries, reviewing contracts, helping me manage dev launch students, reviewing resumes, just building in a lot of context and getting really accurate replies. It helps me script videos. It helps me do accounting things. It helps me answer random questions. Like I'll take a photo of, you know, something in my bedroom or something and be like, what is this thing? Why is this wall outlet look like this? You guys get the idea. But the thing is, because I've been using ChatGPT for so long, like since it came out, it knows everything about me. It knows what car I drive, it knows where I travel, it knows the plans that I have because I feed it all of this information, which is probably not a good thing security-wise, but it happens anyway, so I might as well take advantage of it. So when I go to ChatGPT and I ask it something, it has such relevant context that a lot of these other AI tools just simply cannot have because I haven't been using them for two, three, four plus years. So because of all of that context, it's something that I stick with pretty much every single day. And even though it's not as good as a lot of the other tools at specific tasks, it's just my go-to tool. I use it on my phone, I use it on the computer, and I have it open multiple hours per day, almost always in a second monitor. That's why and how I use it. Let's move on to the next one. Now, the next tool on my list has been a total game changer for my coding productivity and just productivity in general, and that's Whisper Flow. Now, this is hands down the fastest and most accurate dictation tool that I've ever used. Now, it runs in the background, and with a quick keyboard shortcut, you can start dictating in real time. Now, I use it on Windows, Mac, and even on my iPhone because it has like an iOS keyboard extension. And unlike the built-in voice modes or the OS level dictation, Flow works in any application. It's quicker, more accurate, and even saves a history of all of the dictations, which I find extremely useful so that I don't lose long prompts that I'm speaking. And for me, this is legitimately three times my productivity. Now I can normally type, honestly, probably around 60, 70 words per minute. I'm not a great typer, but with flow, I can stream my thoughts at almost 200 words per minute. I'll show you in the tool here. You can see, I think it's like 190 is my average uh, words per minute in the tool. Now that means that my AI prompts are way more detailed and contextual without me having to slow down. Now I use this everywhere. So cursor, Windsor, Lovable, ChatGPT, WhatsApp, Discord, literally everything. I'm just always speaking into my computer now, especially when I wanna write longer messages. And there's something new that's in this tool as well. In cursor and Windsurf, Flow can actually tag variables and files as you dictate. So rather than the normal voice mode, which is pretty much just giving you text in the editor, this knows what application you're working inside of, and then it can actually tag individual files and use the built-in features in that 
tool, which is very useful for providing the right context for the AI. Now, Flow also has extras like a custom vocabulary, built-in notes, team sharing. But honestly, the biggest thing is that it just works every single time I want to use it. And honestly, if you're not using voice right now, you're missing out on massive productivity gains. And more importantly, you're probably not providing the best prompts that you could be to your AI models. I know for me, when I speak, I always give more detail because I'm just not as lazy as if I have to type it out. Now, full disclosure, I was able to partner with Flow on this video, but I've been using them well before the partnership. I've been using them for months now. And if you guys want to try it out for free, you can do so from the link in the description. And I'm going to be going over a full tutorial of this tool soon. Now, the next AI tool on my list is Deep Agent by Abacus AI. Now, this is something that I use whenever I need really complex, long running agentic tasks where I can go out, search the internet, build an app, generate a PowerPoint, make a document, etc. There's a lot of use cases. I've made a lot of videos on this on the channel, so I'm not going to dive extremely in depth. But just to quickly show you a few things I've got this to do for me, I moved into a new apartment recently, so I got to do the full interior design for that apartment based on the floor plan and kind of the preferences that I sent to it. I got it to build a full application uh, that actually is a roadmap tracker for my dev launch students. So I'm not going to run through the whole app, but essentially it's like a custom platform that I can use to generate a roadmap that I can give to students. And then I gave it a bunch of other tasks. One notable one is that again, I moved into this apartment and I noticed there's a lot of construction around me. So I wanted to see, okay, how long are these buildings going to take to be built? You know, how tall are they going to be? Are they going to block my view? Are they going to be noisy? So I just told Deep Agent, hey, this is my address. This is the apartment. This is the floor that I'm on. You know, what buildings are near me that are going to be built soon? Give me the timeline. Give me the floors. Tell me if it's going to block my view, etc. Again, took a very long time, ran and was able to actually do that with very high accuracy, which I'm not able to really do with something like ChatGPT. I'm sure there's other AI tools that can do this as well, but my experience is Deep Agent works really well for these very complex tasks, so that's what I use it for. Now, the next tool on my list is Warp. This is essentially an AI terminal. I mean, they're branding it as like an agentic AI editor, but really it's a terminal with a bunch of AI inside of it. And this allows you to actually generate code as well as run commands. And it's really good for automation tasks or whenever you don't want to really dive into the code and you more so want to work purely kind of on the back end without a ton of visuals and be automating a lot of stuff. So recently I made a full Discord bot, for example, using this because there's a lot of deployment, a lot of configuration, containerization, etc. that you need to do. So it works really well in this terminal environment where you can just switch it to a norm normal terminal and you can like run a command and then you can like open a file directly inside of here if you want to look at it. Or I can switch it to agent mode and I can say, you know, tell me what files are here and then it will determine sorry the commands and the tasks that it should actually run. Something interesting about this is that you can run agents in parallel so I can open up a new tab here and say hey how are you or something right and now both of these are running actually at the exact same time or well this one already finished but you can run multiple of them at the same time kind of like multi-threaded agents which I find is cool. And again, it's what I like for kind of the terminal based AI editing. It's not the only thing that I use. Like I said, I still use cursor. I still use windsurf. I use a lot of the other tools but when I'm working more in a deployment or a backend environment, then I'll open up warp and I'll use it as an agentic kind of terminal where it can suggest commands for me, especially for like containerization, Kubernetes, etc. And it's quite useful. Now, the next tool that I use is Lovable. Now, this is only what I use when I want to generate simple front ends. I do not build entire full stack applications with Lovable, even though you can do that. I simply use it for like landing pages, basic design or spinning up relatively simple sites. Now, you guys might have seen recently that I actually launched my dev launch vault vault.devlaunch.us is the URL if you want to check it out. And I used Lovable to actually generate the entire landing page for that. Then I brought it into cursor and I made a few adjustments. So you can see like I'm inside of the Lovable editor right now. You can see there was a bunch of prompts that I went through and eventually I got it to create what I think is a really slick, simple website just to promote again, this kind of new product that we're launching, which is a simple course for the people that can't afford dev launch essentially. I'm genuinely not trying to sell it to you. I'm just trying to show you that I use Lovable to do that. I got it to generate like the privacy page, the disclaimer, the company info, and I've used it for some other simple websites as well. Again, typically when it's a few pages, it's relatively basic. It doesn't have a ton of data or backend. And then what I do is once it starts getting a bit more complicated, I take the code from GitHub, I put it into cursor, and then I do the rest of the serious development work.
Lovable is really good for those simple design things. Again, I don't think it's the best for like really complex applications, which is why I don't use it for that. But for quick landing pages, as you can see, I've made a few here. It's pretty good. The next AI tool on my list is one that I genuinely cannot live without, and that is TLDV. Now, this is essentially a meeting recorder where anytime I join any kind of Google Meet or Zoom or whatever, this AI bot automatically joins for me and records the meeting. Now, it doesn't just do that. Obviously, it generates the AI summary and notes. It also allows me to provide a template so that based on the meeting type that I'm having, I can have notes based on that template. And then it gives me the full transcript. And oftentimes what I end up doing is copying the transcript into another tool like ChatGPT and then having it analyze that for me so that I can get kind of immediate answers and use that for, for example, crafting a video or coming up with a roadmap or helping a student or whatever. Now it has automations built in. So I'm able to connect this with Zapier, for example. So anytime a meeting is finished, it automatically does a zap or whatever. And then it sends that recording to Discord so my other team members can view it. And I have I just use this all the time. I literally use it multiple times per day. It connects to all of my meetings. I know there's a lot of AI kind of recorders out there, but for me, this one works extremely well. They've never sponsored my channel. I'm just mentioning it because like, this is what I genuinely use. And that's the part of the video, or that's the point of the video. This next tool is one that I've been using more recently, and this is called Blitzy. Now, this tool is significantly different than a lot of the other AI tools that you've used before because it emphasizes spending a lot of time writing a prompt and understanding the context of the project before it does any work. So rather than running in a few minutes or an hour, this tool typically takes one to three days to actually come up with a response. And it's specifically designed for software development. So let me show you a quick example. Essentially, what will happen with Blitzy is you'll upload your existing code base. In my case, I uploaded my previous startup code base, which was quite large. It will generate a massive like 200 plus page technical doc with all of the information, all of the architecture, all of the flow charts and diagrams. You can see like it just generates a massive amount of context and really understands the project deeply. And then you can press one of these buttons here and you can like add a feature or refactor the code base or whatever you want to do. But when you do that, you're expected to write a very detailed um, prompt or instruction, essentially what we, you would pass like a junior developer and then it will go away and essentially start executing that task and take about five minutes per file to run. So I've done tasks here that took four days. I've done tasks that took eight hours, nine hours, but it's very, very comprehensive. And I've had it generate over 200,000 lines of code, even though they promote that it can generate over 3 million. So just an interesting tool, something worth checking out. And I've been using it recently, especially because these kind of context documents are just extremely interesting to look through. Next tool on my list is Zapier. Now this isn't really an AI tool, but I figured I'd mention it because it connects to a lot of my AI tools. Now, this is essentially something that you can use to build visual flows and run all kinds of automations based on triggers or events. So in this case, I was talking to you about the TLDV meeting recorded and then like sending a message in Discord. So I have this hooked up to my TLDV. I have these filter conditions, so like make sure this is a dev launch strategy call, for example, because that's the one I want to run this automation on and then send a message in the channel where it says, hey, like this meeting was finished or completed. This was the date. This is who it's with. You know, you can watch the meeting here. And then I have another message I can't show you because it has some sensitive data, but it sends me a direct message with essentially information that I need in order to proceed to the next step with the student. So Zapier, super cool. I have like 100 plus zaps in here. Again, they're kind of confidential, so I can't show them all to you, but something I use a lot. All right, so that is a pretty detailed list of most of the AI tools that I actually use. Now, in terms of frameworks, I use a lot of AI frameworks to build AI agents and build my own AI tools, and I'm going to quickly go through them. Now, I pretty much always use Python, and then I use Langchain, LangGraph, and then I have some notes, so let me look to the side of my screen. I use LiveKit. This is for uh, like voice agents. I use Voppy, same thing for voice agents, depending on the type of ones I'm trying to build. I use DeepGram, another one for voice agents, and then I use all kinds of other tools like Ingest, for example, for AI orchestration, uh, and probably a bunch of other ones that I'm forgetting. But those are the main frameworks, and typically I'm working with LangChain or LangGraph and then connecting it up to something like a Chroma DB database and some other various kind of like helper modules and libraries. There are so many AI tools out there. I use a lot of them, but these are the ones that came to the top of my head when I was thinking of crafting this video. 
Hopefully you found it useful. You learned about an AI tool that maybe you've never seen before. And now you're going to go play around with it and kind of have some more productivity or some more usefulness, I don't know, from these tools. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.